Hello everyone, welcome to the Pro Poka Podcast. My name is Pro Poka Noob, and joining me for the entirety of this session forever is Mr. Amma Gamma. How are you doing, Amma? Help, he's held me against my will. Only on the internet. This basement's cold. You're t- no, you're not the one in my basement, though. That's the thing. <laughs> you're not in my basement. If you were in my basement, you'd be a true Canadian because muscle shirt, negative 20 Celsius. <laughs> true. Anyways, welcome to the new podcast that I will be doing primarily for the Pro Pokeball. There may be other things added to it, but for now we will be catering this towards Pro Pokeball events. This is preseason episode number one. Emma Gamma and I will be taking you through all the ins and outs of the Pro Pokeball, starting today with looking at the history of the Pro Pokeball as well as changes that you can expect throughout season five and what it will mean for you as a coach and as a viewer. As well, we'll be having a little bit of fun here and there, playing around with some movesets and having some fun games to keep a little bit of a competition between us because we're average in battling, but can we be average also in anything else related to Pokemon? <laughs> I'm sure the answer is yes. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, so to give you a little bit of a, of a breakdown today, like I said, we're going to be talking about the Gen 5, or Gen 5, Season 5, not Gen 5. That was like a few years ago back when the Pro Pokeball started. Nice segue. We're going to be dropping a lot of information. Just a quick disclaimer about this podcast from here on in. Uh, Neither of us are going to be putting ourselves in a totally professional, like, look at us to become the next Pokemon Master. That's only if you actually play the normal games and, you know, accept that level of difficulty. Uh, We'll be giving our own advice, our own opinions. Everything is as such. We will never say anything or never mean anything to hurt anybody. And uh, we will always be holding a sympathetic ear to people in the comments section or wherever you're listening to this too. Yeah. The, uh, don't take our word as fact. We're, we're just speculating. We're just doing what we think. We don't know everything about Pokemon. So what we think. But... Oh no. <laughs> Listen, man, <laughs> I, I could, I could be throwing, uh, acrobatics on my mega septile. Okay. Like <laughs> you have to get that out. Aren't you? Oh, we no, no. You know what? That's a, no, that's staying in. Every piece of that is staying in. You've oh, already gone boy. there. Anyways, well, talking about Acrobatics Mega Septa, we should probably talk about the history of the Pro Pokeball. Emma, yeah, when did you actually start watching the Pro Pokeball? Actually, okay, I believe I had caught glimpses of it season three, I think, back when I first started watching it. Okay. And then I actually caught most of season four. That was the one with uh, Ox and Shark King and all them, right? Yes. Okay, then, yeah, that's that's how it went. I, I watched most of that. I tried to get into it. I, I kept up as much as I could. Um, I remember, actually, the reason I kept watching it was because I was part of that mock Pro Pokeball right before that, in which I, I didn't do too bad, I don't think. I think I did okay. I think you got fourth in that? Yeah, something like that. Out of out of nine or ten or something, it was pretty good. I'm proud of that. No, no, you should be. I mean, top six in my <laughs> in my in my eyes is pretty freaking good if you're looking to succeed in a pro pokeball anyways, or if you're looking to meme, I don't care, get tenth and pull out the biggest meme ever of choice band Ferrothorn, but that person also <laughs> didn't get tenth, they got sixth. <laughs> See, it could work. It could work. <laughs> there you go, yeah. That's the best thing about the pro pokeball. You can make anything work. Don't 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 get down on yourself if you if you're like, Oh, I I guess I couldn't have done this thing or whatever. Just you, you can do it. You can do it if you try hard enough. Yeah, for those of you who have not actually been on my channel, uh, we started on Twitch back in January 2015, and back then I started as a Gen 5 competitive Pokemon player. Or was it Gen 6? No, I think I was doing Gen 5 and then transitioning into Gen 6 at the same time when I moved over to Twitch um, from YouTube content back starting in 2011. My god, I'm old. Anyways, (laughs) so there was a suggestion by a viewer named DoodleHumper69 who wanted us to run a tournament because one thing that was severely lacking on Twitch was a live commentated Pokemon tournament. There were plenty of Pokemon tournaments, but none of them were done. They were all done amongst forums, which is there's nothing wrong with it, but something that people really wanted to see from my community anyways, as small as it was, was they're looking for people who could actually commentate. And one thing that I usually do throughout my battles rather than just playing was I'd sit there and analyze what I was doing back when I was really, really average and talk through what i was thinking and what my opponents were doing we started slipping into other people's battles and just talking about it so once that started happening we're saying well let's do a tournament and i remember 
there was a person who came in and said, well, how are you going to run a tournament on the internet? And that got me to thinking, I'm like, well, now I have to do it because if nobody's going to believe me, then I have to be the first person to do a live commentated on-time tournament, no matter how big it is. And lo and behold, I believe we had 12 coaches for the first season. I'm just going to quickly double check that as I was staring at season three because I thought you'd talk more about it, but that's no big deal. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't catch too much of it. I, I just remember some small bits and pieces. Yeah, that's uh, okay. I believe. <laughs> but yeah, there were 12 people that had actually signed up. Now, by the end, there was only six. But that just starts the evolution of the uh, the pro Pokeballs. We started going into other seasons and started looking at new rules. Um, originally, the tournament was always supposed to be designed as a mixed OU draft tournament. So you would come in, you'd get a giant pool of Pokemon. We started with one pool, I believe. And we started, I think we always had two pools, actually. Did we always have two pools? I think we always had two I, pools. I don't dang. remember all the way back then. Oh, my God. Because the problem was I can't even check VODs. And, of course, you know, at the beginning of your streaming career, I wasn't I wasn't all in on everything in terms of um, recording or optimizing and remembering and building a history. I wanted to build a history, but nothing that I ever remembered or, or documented formally. So... Back when we started, we always had the... We were drafting. We didn't have any banning, if I recall correctly. Or if we had banning, there wasn't as many bans. I don't think there was any banning until Season 2. Or Season... Yeah, it must have been Season 2, because I think that's when the Celebrity Edition... Oh, no, 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 was... Wow, I remember my own history really well, Gamma. <laughs> Anyways. Um, banning came in eventually, it? but originally, it was a draft. You had to draft 12 Pokemon. There was a specific order in which you had to draft them. If you drafted one particular tier, it affected your subsequent draft pick um, to usually a lower or a higher tier, depending on if you started up higher or lower, respectively. So, essentially, people started drafting things. They started seeing how interesting it could get. Over time, we started adding things like bands, multiple uh, drafting phases where the positions would be different between uh, t Pool 1 and Pool 2. And now, once we start talking about the Season 5 changes, you're going to see that a lot of these um, slowly evolving changes to the Pro Pokal have actually, I think, in my opinion, hit a new level of strategy to give fun to everybody. I believe it's going to work out that way, seeing all the changes that you've made. We're just we're just we're just teasing it. We have to we have to tease it. But um, soon, TM. Soon, yeah. Oh God, not not too soon because it's gonna be the same episode. Uh. Cheesy jokes. Anyways, so so over time, the the uh, the pro Pokeball actually just started picking up a lot of popularity. Started getting people like Gamma Gamma, and then we started having we moved on from calling them players to coaches. Believe it or not, I don't think I called them coaches from the very beginning in season one. And then we started having people coming back multiple times. No one has formally hit that two time yet, though. There is no two time champion in this tournament yet. We had Dagger Drone back in December twenty first, two thousand fifteen. As our season one champion, rocking an official sand team, and I could tell you exactly what he had. He had Excadrill. We had Alakazam. <laughs> he had Tyranitar Excadrill. Clefable. He had that core mixed, I think, with a Hippowdon and something else. And the man just ran rampant throughout the tournament. Went perfect. Destroyed everybody. It wasn't even a close competition. You come to season two. Ivan Valdez, eleven, makes it to the Pro Pokeball Championship, takes it over, which should have, which was actually a bit of an upset because we had a couple of other players, aka back at the time, I think his name was Dr. Diego, who actually got lucked out of a win and was unable to go to the finals. Who had the better matchup, arguably against Ivan, but he in the end took the victory and set his, set history there for season two. We had a little bit of a celebrity edition, which I got to stop counting as an official season because now it's just throwing off my numbers. Season five was the sixth <laughs> season, but uh, celebrity edition, I brought in six personal friends who are really good at battle like who are a little bit of a higher caliber of battling to just kind of give a little bit of attention to it. and we actually had Sweet D, formerly Dr. Diego changing his, winning the team as under Team Iron Man, holding that championship title. Season 3 when Gamma came in, the Arizona Articuno's Lord Scrubbington taking that victory with a very tense um, it was a very tense finals because both of them were very, very good, but there was a way that Scrubbington had built his team that made it very difficult for for Sweet D to actually take victory, and his it just ended up being, I, if I recall correctly, game one was very close, and then over time, I think there was like one change or for Alligator or something on the side of Scrubbington, he just won from there. It got better and better for him every single time, and that was a that was the true start to the evolution of 
the strategy and the drafting and everything kind of coming together. And then recently, just as of uh, June, June, June 6th, 2018, <laughs> Mitchie W taking season four. And now we're here. And I believe this is going to be a much different season because of all the draft or all the uh, tier changes that have happened over the past year. Actually, yeah, we'll be over a year now. Wow. But there's going to be a lot of great things that came in with Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. There's going to be, a, it's, it's a much more developed series this time where there's Pokemon everywhere and it's going to be absolutely astonishing but uh the the seasons and everything that evolved you know that one person to you that one person who might be listening saying hey how do you run a tournament on the internet season five baby can't stop this train <laughs> actually there's Gamma. no breaks on this train there's no break it's oh up. well I wish there were breaks sometimes <laughs> <laughs> the break is yearly duh is there any like you don't have to say names, but have you seen live commentated tournaments for Pokemon on Twitch? I have not seen them on Twitch. I've seen them on YouTube live streamed. Oh yeah, you should. Sure. I, I I could I could say it if you want me to. I don't I don't I don't know if you want me to to to, to say the name of it, but there there's a couple competitions that are uh, live on uh, YouTube and they do commentate over it. I don't think the commentary is as well uh, as good as say the Pro Pokeball. Oh, thanks, man. Not 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 to toot your own <laughs> horn. You're but, tooting uh, my horn for me. <laughs> I'm not tooting my own <laughs> horn. You said it. <laughs> but yeah, no, no. Uh, honestly, it is the best and most well-known live commentary on Twitch uh, Pokemon tournaments. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> I love how confident you are in saying that. <laughs> I mean, the... I'm confident because I haven't seen any others. There you go. <laughs> you can you can't be last if you're the only one. Mm. Exactly. Or you can be. You know what? No, no, no. Even better, it just fits in with my name. If I'm the only, I'm the best and the worst simultaneously. Exactly. You don't. You can't lose if you can't win. Ah. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> We're gonna li- win and lose together, New Blitz. Isn't that great? <laughs> I love life. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. So we, we. You're wondering maybe maybe this year we'll have a twice in a uh, twice pro Pokeball champion. They're gonna get that that awesome duck twice. <laughs> The awesome duck trophy. Yeah, like, you know what? I I own that duck twice. Okay, <laughs> so I I think I think we could see that this year. Mm-hmm. You never know, but there are a lot of new people that we haven't seen play before. Some that are actually pretty formidable, from what I've heard, on the uh, uh, on the pro poker streets. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pro poker streets. Oh boy, I'm just I'm. Get, there's gonna be a place called Newbopolis, and I'm. And it's just not gonna be a joke. It's actually gonna be real, and people are gonna be terrified about that. So yeah, there are some historical things that could happen this season. Uh, with we don't have an official coaches list set up yet. Uh, at this current time, we do have 14 eligible coaches that have signed up, which would be if all of them stay the largest pro pokeable. The largest that we've had right now in terms of retention is actually 10, despite the fact we had 12 in season one. It did drop to six due to. Uh, administrative issues as well as just a lot of not checking in with consistency and stuff like that. Things have gotten much better in terms of the administrative. And I think that's when we're looking at season five to give just a general overview from the administrative side. We have a lot more forms, a lot more accountability. We have an ethics system that is being put into place to give people strikes to make sure that we keep this tournament as a competitive and fun environment at the exact same time. We have never asked for anybody to be the best or the worst. We just want people to join because it is a fun experience. And honestly, it is the way that the tournament is designed. You can be last or you could be first. Yes, we always make the joke, the joke. If you're not first, you're last. I've kind of dropped that as of like season two, because in the end, it was just so incredible to see a tournament that grew like this and became so, like, it was. it's so hyped up in the channel and it happens once a year. This will be, this will be the fourth year, this will be the fifth season happening. And I can't even begin to imagine why people would even get so excited over something that is just they're getting their name in a duck that is sitting up on my counter next to my Pro Pokeball, or Pro Poke Noob wooden sign. So... It's a pretty good trophy, I gotta it, say. You know what? There might be a surprise by the end of the season. I'm gonna hint at that. There may be a surprise and enhancement of duckery. Mm, there might be a duckery enhancement. There's uh, gonna be a duck 2.0? Is that, is that what you're trying to... Trying I don't to... want to give you any more information. Mm-hmm. I want your imagination mm-hmm. to run wild because the duck will never die. It's actually... I'm really <laughs> concerned because the duck is fading and, like, the little pro pokeable banner on it is, like, ripped to shreds. It has about three layers of tape on it. So... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's... 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 holding on. Uh, as long as there's no water damage done to it. it. You know, did I ever tell you how I got that duck? 
Uh, did somebody make it? I made it. Somebody... Yeah, I was. I, I, was about... I could have sworn I remember you going on the whole spiel with like season four, uh, oh, no, where no, you were no. just was it season four? Season one, it... man. No, season one. I didn't catch that one. Okay. Catch... <laughs> here's here's a good piece of history for you guys. Season one. I realized I wanted to give somebody a, tur- a trophy because, of course, as you guys may or may not know, I'm very budget. I don't have a lot to be able to spend on the tournament or anything really on this channel. I try and enhance the things the best that I can. And especially back in 2015, I didn't have next to anything going on in terms of, of a good income to support anything. So I didn't have a trophy. I didn't have anywhere to put the names. And I wanted to immortalize people on the t- on the tournament without just putting their names in the bottom of the description, which was fine. But I wanted something more. And I wanted something physical. So, the semifinals of season one, I ran upstairs on our break for about 20 minutes, I believe, and I was scrambling through my room to find a trophy that was free and I could cover the name up on, and all of mine had, like, it was either a soccer trophy or, or, a, or a karate trophy, I have a lot of trophies, or was it, you know, a banner of award as an academic, banner of award religion style, so I have, like, I have, like, 30 or 40 trophies upstairs, not a flex, I swear. And then I ended up finding a duck. And this duck I painted with my ex-girlfriend on a trip to All Fired Up. It was an art acrylic place. So <laughs> I had rings in there. I had like these little rings that I used to wear because I used to actually wear bling and like a shark tooth necklace. Thank God I dropped Ooh. that look. It would, it was pinching my hair so much, man. <laughs> but uh, I grabbed the duck. I quickly went on Microsoft Publisher, printed off the banner. I just took like a banner from Google, put it on, put the Pro Pokeball on it. And that very day when we were trying to build it up, I grabbed the duck and I showed it to everybody. I'm pretty sure it was on the semifinals. If I showed it in advance, it wasn't prepared. Like, it was just not, it wasn't what it was supposed to be. And we just started joking. And now there are actually still people's names in that duck. Like, I still have every every banner, even Mitchie's, Mitchie W's name is in that duck. I have done it as a tradition every single time. At the beginning of, I think, season four, I showed off everybody's banner in the duck. I don't know if I did it in season three or two. Um, cause I mean, it's kind of silly to show off one name in the duck when it's season two. So, uh, mm-hmm. and now we have obviously the beautiful, the beautiful Microsoft publisher golden slides, <laughs> the, the golden plates, <laughs> but yeah, there might oh, yes. be an enhancement in duckery this season coming up near the end. You'll have to, you'll have to wait until the end to see that. But, uh, the, the community involvement will be much bigger. If you guys knew in season four, we actually had voting with, uh, new bits, which are in-channel currency, to cheer on your most valuable Pokemaster. The person at the end actually won a free Tier 1 sub. Uh, and then as well as the winner of the Pro Pokeball in Season 4 also won a Tier 1 sub. This year, there will also be a monetary reward of sorts. It will not be money, but it will be in some way, shape, or form a reward. That will not just be subs. It will be uh, it will be completely provided by myself. If there's any sponsors who want to hit me up and hit me on Taco Bell sponsorship, yeah, let's do that. We're bringing it over here, too. Dude, okay, how many people would actually join the tournament if I gave them a year supply of Taco Bell? Um, I, I joined three times. <laughs> you play three <laughs> aliases, Amma Gamma, Gamma Mama, and... and Mama Jamma Bama. Mama Jamma, oh man, that's a good name, I like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I need those tacos, man, free tacos. <laughs> I mean, I, I can blame you, I'm not going to say I won't blame you because I don't like Taco Bell, but... Uh... Yeah, I, I can't. Blame I know. You I like know them. that you'd quit the pocket aces for if we if ever got sponsored by Taco Bell. No, 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 no. It's not quitting the pocket aces for Taco Bell. It's, it's quitting the pocket aces for whatever reason we got the sponsorship for Taco Bell. Uh, yeah, probably. I have no qualms with Taco Bell. <laughs> I have I have qualms with whatever we're going to do, like what you had in that video of your of your vod that I saw, which was oh god, seven resignation letters worth of of cringe for me. Uh. <laughs> Oh Lord! <laughs> but yeah, there will be we'll be talking a little bit about fan involvement. Is that now? Hey, that is now. Let's yeah. talk about fan involvement this year. Cool. I wrote up a I wrote up a thing to organize what we were going to talk about in what order, and I didn't put in the same order on my little sheet that I wrote when I went to Ohio. So. Oh no. Let's talk about fan involvement, Gamma. Gamma, do, are you a person who likes to do things while you're watching the Pro Pokeball? I love to. Yeah. No, I I, I love uh, cheering on the 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 coaches, and I love. You know, having it on on the side while maybe I'm doing some work, editing or whatever, you know. For those of you who don't know, I brought Amagama on here to explicitly just hype up the Pro Pokeball. He's the hype man right now. He's my wing hype man. Uh, yeah, let's go. Pro Pokeball. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Uh, on top of the fact that, you know, there are no battles going on, so he can't give his average comparisons just like I would give my sub-average comparisons. But uh, did you I actually mean- give any new bits to the MVP voting week by week? 
Oh yeah, I remember. I did. I did? literally I dropped so many new bits on Ox. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, because I, I had I'm the... the reason that she I, did she get second place or first place she with got that. First. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> I dro- I dropped every single new bit I made into Ox. Yeah, before we had the uh, Streamlabs bot that we have now where you gain nubits by watching and stuff like that. Oh no, that's all you had. Before we had all the mini games associated with the bot that we do now on the channel. We essentially had a small, a medium, and a large size donation for a, for a coach support. You could do it any number of times. I would redeem it after the after the weeks were done, and I would keep track of who was the most valuable Pokemon Master to the, to the community's eyes. And, and funnily enough, we did get a fair amount of, of good response from it. Some people are voting just for friends. I'm like, that's you're allowed to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there was a fair amount of competition for a little bit, for a few couple of weeks anyways, when people get into top six and trying to encourage those people to get up there. And it was, it was kind of really neat, and it kind of sparked this sort of uh, system that I wanted to keep with the community because it's... It felt good beyond, I already have community members that were cheering on coaches, that were getting so hyped up, you know, shout outs to, Gl- to Glalite Gardevoir and Glalite, Gar- uh, yeah, Glalite Glalie, when, the, when that giant mess up happened between, that was World Leader and Ivan, I think? Season 2? I think, I can't remember. It was the season when Ivan had 8 things weak to rocks, so... <laughs> Six things. Either way, he had yeah, he had over half his team weak to rocks. It was it was uh, he still won. Keep that in mind, because he made yeah. a few. That's when he could trade up and actually won a few things. But you know, the community gets so into it. And I wanted to give them something more to get into it. Whether if they maybe wanted to look at the more the competitive side, not just so much as the hype side. So we're gonna do two things. This will take form as I develop it towards the Pro Pokeball Season 5, which, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you're curious, will be starting in July 2019. So you're listening to this and you're like, wow. It's going to be happening soon. And the answer is, yes, viewer. Yes, it will be happening soon. So Very soon. Very Yeah, actually, very soon. The date that we're recording this is very, very close to the start mm-hmm. of the Pro Poke Bowl. That's, that's how rampant we're going to be going with everything. Like, it's going to start before even... Like, you're not going to forget it was going to start. It's just going to start, and we're going to keep going. So... <laughs> But yeah, so two things you can look forward to. We're going to have featured matches of the week. It's not going to just revolve around the top players in the in the tournament battling each other because we do have a round-robin format that they battle with. But what will end up happening is we'll have featured matches of the week. We will have people betting Nubits, and they can earn themselves a lot of Nubits based on the results that they think will happen. You can either guess on a 2-0 for somebody or a 1-1. If you do, you win a lot of Nubits. I know my viewers in particular, if you like if you like gambling, I'm not, I'm not encouraging gambling, but this doesn't cost you any money. All of the things that happen on the channel actually cost cost zero dollars for you you can get everything for free and you just win nubis that you can use for many other events we do on the channel and those will be coming up that's a different topic from the pro pokeball but uh mm-hmm. you know it's my podcast i can advertise whatever i want uh <laughs> thanks for getting me back into gambling how do i respond to that <laughs> <laughs> y- yay okay so i <laughs> We will we will have that featured matchup betting. At the same time, we are going to also be developing a fantasy draft where you guys can guess on the results of the entire season. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm hoping that with the amount of accountability we keep with everybody in terms of the commitment that the coaches have shown over the past at least three seasons, it seems to be a lot more consistent to the point where we can actually do a fantasy draft. And for you viewers who do end up participating and the person who comes out on top... I don't know exactly the full semantics, but you will also be winning something with a monetary value at the end of the season. So oh, wow. it will be open to everyone who is not a coach. That is that is as fair as it's going to get. But uh, if you are looking to see a particular coach win, or if you are thinking that you can predict the future, if you are better than a slow king using future sight, shout outs to season four champion Mitchy W. I see you smiling over there, Gamma. I I remember I remember that those matches and <laughs> that it, future site that stamp was, future it was legal. site though it was legal and it was great and yeah. it was legit. But oh, if man. you guys are looking to try and get your future site on, make sure you're looking towards that fantasy draft as well as the featured matchups of the week. It will be one per week after I think after week two we'll probably have some featured matchups unless there's something that randomizes into something cool. Then we'll go from there. We're pretty flexible. It's a pretty open tournament. The commitment is mainly from the coaches. Everybody else just drops in. It is such a fun time. I honestly can't wait to start talking about the the season five changes. Honestly, uh, this is turning out to be probably the biggest pro pokeball seeing that all these rewards and prizes that are coming out are way more than what we've seen in the past too. So, get your butts over there. Start betting. Path start playing. Four. 
past four gamma. Past four? It's season five. Oh, I, I'm sorry. No, no, but you know what? I, I agree. Season three was really the time when we started going from just a tournament on the channel to like, I want to make it an official tournament on the channel. It, it became, it, it left its beta phases and just entered like, this is something we're doing as much as we can. It's a very time consuming tournament. It requires a lot of commitment from people online, as we mentioned. And that's why I take so much care to make it the best that I can with on time with all the documents. That's why this pro poker podcast is coming up because I want everything to be as formal, and you guys deserve, for all the time you're giving me, I 100% agree that I will give all of my time to you and more, because I think that'll just enhance the experience, and, like, we've all, we're all taking part in just creating something phenomenal. You know, imagine if you just have a bunch of people walking in to a live commentated tournament, you got music going, you got statistics going, you've got all these things, you've got even history growing now with, you know, potentially the first two time if those coaches do end up entering the season, it's, there's so, so many things that can happen in season five, I, and with all the changes happening too, I'm, I'm ready, I just, can we start now actually, Gamma? I'm, I'm down. What we're going to do down. is verbally say out the pools. <laughs> we'll, we'll build a team for the 14 coaches. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go. I'm be ready. Better, it'll be better than Star-Lord two, Star-Lord Season 2's team. Anyways, so, before we get into the Season 5 changes, I'd like to play a game. We're going to play some games on the Pro Poker Podcast because we like to game, Gamma. Do you like to game? I love games. Are you game for gaming? I'm, I am so game. You don't even have to ask. I'm I'm game for the game. <laughs> well, now this is awkward because I asked you though. So, did well, I, I mean, did I ruin it? No, no, no. I'd I'd love to play this game. I'd love to see love to see if uh, we can both remember certain things about certain Pokemon and tierings and all that as well. You know, yep. Emma Gamma I'm not, I'm not is hinting. So <laughs> Emma Gamma is hinting to the game called Show Me Your Move Sets. Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. I went Smash. I, can't wait to... I, can't I went Smash. <laughs> Okay, we're going to be keeping track of this. I'm going to be keeping track of this little funny game on the side here. But show me your move sets. Gamma and I have both chosen a secret Pokemon. We are going to choose a particular Pokemon from Gen 7. Or not from Gen 7, but the Gen 7 metagame. We're going to choose a move set that might either be from an older generation or from a new generation. We're going to say the move set, the tier that the Pokemon comes from, and we're going to see if we can guess it within a minute. If we don't get it within the minute, we will then move on to give more information. The, and we'll the, based on the amount of information we have to give, we'll earn us a number of points. And we'll see at the end of the Pro Pokeball Season 5... Who can do the best with Show Me Your Move Sets? We might have other games. I actually had some other games that I developed on the side, which will be... It'll it'll kind of remind you of the quiz show that we do during my Extra Life tournaments. Or my Extra Life events. Mm. So, uh... But yeah, Show Me Your Move Sets. I'm gonna start because Gamma wants to see how it's done. So... Yeah, just, just so we can get a feel for it. And of course, if you are listening, watching, whatever you're doing to my voice and Gamma's voice, um, try and guess before we say anything. Challenge yourself. You ready, Gamma? Yeah. Join along with us. I'm ready. Okay, so in Sun and Moon, this Pokemon is ranked NU. Okay. But I am taking the moveset from Gen 6 RU. Hmm. Okay. So the moveset is... The title of it, anyways, this is this is from Smogon, by the way. We're going to keep it as, as clean as possible, and we're going to try and choose movesets that are relatively iconic, if you can figure it out. So in Gen 6 RU, this particular Pokemon ran Spikes, Final Gambit... Encore and Bug Buzz had a Focus Sash. The ability is Unburden, and it was a Timid Nature with max HP and max speed. Hmm. Hmm. I have a feeling this is a Bug type Pokemon. Uh, spikes, you said? Spikes. Final Gambit. Buzz, Final Gambit. Encore. Encore. For some reason, my mind's like Venomoth, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure that's... I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Because I don't think Venomoth has Unburden. Hmm. Now, for those of you who are also wondering how we're going to figure it out between 700-plus Pokemon, we both have Pokemon Showdown open, but we're just using it to identify the tiers. So he'll be looking through the yeah. NU if he's looking for a Pokemon that could match it, but he's not going to click on it. Because he's a good boy like you that. Said, you said it's currently NU, right? It is currently NU. Okay. NU. And then, let's see. Also, we're not going to be hardcore. If he gets it wrong, whatever. <laughs> we'll give him more guesses. Right. <laughs> oh, 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 I think I know what it is. What is it? Excelgore. Oh, nice. 
Yeah, yeah. that was that was my favorite move set back in Gen Six. Oh, Excelgor is crazy. I love Excelgor. Yeah, it was. It was. I remember. I actually think I ran Choice Scarf Final Gambit at some point too. I think people were running it too. I for some reason I remember that. I don't know why. It's yeah. just like it was so fast, and I thought it'd be a fantastic yeah. meme. Just go. You know what? I was Choice Scarfing Breloom back in Gen Six. Let's Choice Scarf Excelgor and see what it does. And lo and behold, it actually became really good because I think I ran that exact same move set. And I think I took out Encore and put U Turn. Is it get U Turn? Or did I use Final Gambit for that? Either uh, way, it does get U-turn. It does get U-turn. So I think that's what I used it for instead of Encore and just went to town on people. It was it, This this move set to me was literally a rogue player's paradise. Even though it was standard, it just felt so funny. And I got very sad when I looked at Sun and Moon and now it runs choice specs. Eh, it's gross. Well, the thing is, when it comes to... You don't even need choice scarf anymore at this point because honestly, it's like the out of all the Pokemon, it is the ninth fastest pokemon base stat wise look at you mr knowledge base yeah. whoa well no this is the thing i actually had looked into um building a Selgor on my my bgc oh. team because i was look. i needed something fast mm-hmm. and i'm not going to throw a ninjask out there because obviously Do it. <laughs> no no <laughs> no please god no because <laughs> ninjask is just it, it's good. even with the focus sash i i don't i don't think it could last i, I don't think it would be good you can't beat Xerneas. But, um, <laughs> That's all that matters with BGC, no, right? Nothing nothing can beat Xerneas. I hate it. I hate it so much. Don't <laughs> don't get me started on Xerneas. I will go for hours. <laughs> and we don't have that much time. No. <laughs> but yeah, Excelgor is a great Pokemon, and it's definitely up there with the uh, speed stat. Obviously, the trade-off is that it's not that bulky, but it's got some really nice special attack. So it's it's definitely something you'd want to use on a team if you have the option. Yeah, I, I, I pulled out Choice Scarf because I'm dumb. But, uh, you know, it was it was really interesting to even just consider with its 145 speed and 100 special attack, so it, it hit okay. But just to think that with 80 HP, you could drop Final Gambit, and then you just started trolling people. Because I believe this is also the time when you could use Custat Berry with Explosion. So yeah. these types of uh, self-sacrificing tactics existed, and it wasn't as hard punished. Because the other one... Another one that I really loved, I don't know if I stole on yours, but do you remember Memento Doug Trio with Arena Trap before Arena Trap I got banned? I do not. Oh, you don't? Oh, that was such not. a great... I used to run that in Little Cup with Diglett. That sounds busted. It's not busted. I mean, Doug Trio in itself was incredibly strong because of all of its trapping capabilities, but mm-hmm. just to give an example of the self-sacrificing nature, what you could do is you could actually find a Pokemon to trap with Doug Trio, and rather than trying to kill it because it would be too bulky, you find something that couldn't stop your setup carry, Use Memento to put it at minus two, and now it's never going to kill if you tried to set up, you know, something like an Alakazam mm-hmm. on the special side with Calm Mind, or if you tried to set up Cosmic Power Sigilyph or something like Like, I, you could do so much with it because you would neuter them so hard, and they couldn't switch in a proper answer, so they're either forced to attack minus two, or even if they had the chance to switch, that thing was going to get minus two anyway. So it was like, it was, it, you either get an extra turn or an extra turn with them doing no damage. So it was really, really good to use against offensive pokes. And then get your own setup sweeper and just clean up house. It was it was gross. It was I gross. Actually, but Gamma, really, yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, real quick, I want to place a disclaimer. When I said that it's the ninth fastest Pokemon, <gasps> no, you lied. the thing is, if you don't count legendaries, it's literally the third fastest just Pokemon. Legendaries and Megas, if you cut those out, it is the third fastest Pokemon, period. What's the fastest in, in total, Gamma? Uh, the fastest normal Pokemon would be uh, Ninjasket. I believe it is 160 speed. Yep. What's the overall and fastest Pokemon in the game? Overall fastest Pokemon is Speed Deoxys with 180 speed, which is stupid. Oh, you baby! <laughs> yeah, I loved it in OU. Actually, you know what? I did make an argument back in the day that it was not busted, and I was heavily scrutinized. I also never used it. Rightfully so. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Th- you can rub it in all you want. It's in the past now, and no one needs to know that except I immortalized it on <laughs> all of these social media platforms. Oh, God. All right, Gamma, you got uh, yourself three points. Congratulations. A, uh, a cap a clap for you, my friend. What do you got for me? All right, I have a current move set, actually. Okay. Um, it is OU. Oh, oh, God, no. <laughs> and the move set is Scald, Recover, Toxic and Earthquake. Scald, Recover, Toxic, Earthquake? Yeah. 
I will give you an extra hint if you want it. Uh, let me hold on. Let me. Yeah, take a second. Take a second. Scald recover toxic earthquake. I'm trying to think of all the Pokemon that get recover. In mm -hmm. OU, you're counting BLs too, right? I am counting OU. It says OU. So. Just specifically OU. Really? It's an OU moveset. Oh, well, the Pokemon's tier is technically PU, actually. But playing it in OU, oh, that is... Oh, that's set. Gastrodon, then. You got it. That's gotta be Gastrodon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's an OU moveset <laughs> for a PU poke. Sorry about that. Yeah, there no. is, that is the OU moveset. Because <laughs> I'm looking but, through, I'm um, like, I don't think Toxapex gets Earthquake. <laughs> no, I don't believe it. Does. <laughs> Swampert doesn't get recover. I'm confused now. I I thought I was gonna I thought I was gonna mess you up a little bit just because I I thought you maybe you would have went for Quagsire, but ooh, it's it's all right. It's you. you but the cool, <laughs> yeah. The cool thing is actually um our Pokemon are kind of kind of similar in a way. They both have Sticky Hold. Oh Which is one of the things that I'd probably recommend. Either that or Storm Drain on uh, Gastrodon. I think most people so. run Storm Drain because its natural bulk is okay if it loses leftovers. Um, yeah. And Storm Drain, like, because the way that you really think about it when it comes to competitive is because Pokemon's a crappy game, and I'm going to say, I always say this, so it's nothing new. Um, mm -hmm. Any type of immunity is so good because you already oh, yeah. have restricted options between switching or attacking and whatnot that to just have one more immunity to think about actually does matter. It's not the end of the world, but that the fact that Gastrodon only has one weakness in grass yeah. and now also has an immunity to water and gets a special attack boost on the skull, which, I mean, is minuscule considering it might be just a defensive poke, but it just it enhances its experience so much as a defensive wall. That's something I wanted that. to add, by the way. This move set, I, I I disagree with it a little bit because earthquake. Instead of using earthquake, you could just use uh, earth power, I, I and think... it would be Let's it would see. be more stronger if you get if you if you get off a of storm drain, you get the special attack boost. You're doing more damage than earthquake. It says here you use it to hit the uh, assault vest and combined Marigiarna. Uh, explains it. Okay. Yeah, because I've seen this before. We've seen this before. Actually, I think on I think Tangrowth also does this with Earthquake. There are certain Pokemon because, like, if you actually look at Gastron stats, eighty three attack, ninety two special attack. So yes, you would want that slightly big di uh, difference. But the nice thing is, it can come in because of its special defense bulk. It can take the hits from these combine uses and hit it on the physical side. And I think I think Tangrowth is another fairly common one that does this. Uh, yeah. I think also Swampert in Yu Yu used to. I don't know if it still does, but I'm pretty sure it does. Where it, it would used to run like a mixed set. Even Mega Obama Snow used to do that, where it would mix up between its special attack and its attack. So the best move set I ever saw Giga Drain Wood Hammer, Ice Shard Blizzard. My God. Because it would literally just be are you looking for that little bit of damage on the special side, or are you looking to literally wreck face or get the priority with Ice Shard? It was. I'm just looking at this going, this looks so stupid, but it could work <laughs> on so many <laughs> levels if there's nothing That's to true. resist or nothing that could switch in well, so. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're both coming out with three points. Yay! I guess we'll have to wait until the act. Well, no, we'll have to wait for more podcasts to see. How did you do, viewers? Answer in the comment yeah. section below if there is one! <laughs> there will be on YouTube. <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah. Preferential treatment to YouTube fans. Yay! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, Gamma, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this podcast. All right. Let's talk about the Season 5 changes. Now, I know you saw Season 4, and even then, we're only going to talk the transition from 4 to 5, and there are a sizable number of them, considering a lot of my focus this season was to increase the overall strategy to put a focus back into the drafting aspect of the Pro Pokemon, because originally when this was designed, it was meant to be win at draft, right? That might sound like, well, why would you play 13 weeks in against all these people to just lose when they have a better team? Well, the problem was it didn't have the pieces to allow people to fight draft-wise to then let their draft speak for their skill. And of course, skill matters, but you still need to build that good core. And a lot of it came down to well, what's your knowledge and what are you trying to build? And also, can you play that certain build? We've seen many examples in the past, Bro Pokeball, Pokeball Bulls, where 
there are teams that are built, but then people don't know how to use them properly. I think the first time we actually saw a hyper-aggressive team successfully used was a combination of Oxum and Shark King in Season 4 with the uh, Sky Power, or Sock Power Sky Sharks. And they showed how to play offensive, and we had an example in the past before where we've had hyper-aggressive players or hyper-defensive players who played it, but it didn't match the overall look of the pool. And I think now a lot of it's going to be looking down to the pool and looking at the splits on what are you going to be picking up, and is it going to be worth it now? We, we uh, again, just recency looking at Mega Beedrill and Mega Sharpedo on Mitchie W's team. Just how powerful it was in taking down the majority of people's walls and, and trades weren't utilized as much as they could be. And there wasn't much left in the pool to trade for. So he ended up winning in draft because he knew what to do. But that's half the battle of the Pro Pokeball, which makes it super interesting because now you have multiple weeks put into preparation on paper. And then you have to look for the next 16 weeks to see, is this going to actually work? And can I play it well enough to make it work? So it's uh, yeah. it's going to be interesting. So as we mentioned, uh, the cha- the main, the primary change that we had administrative-wise is we have a lot more sign-up sheets. We now have a sign-up form. We have a lot of these other papers that you're going to be receiving. You're obviously going to be hearing this podcast weekly throughout the Pro Pokeball season. Uh, week after week, we'll be talking about what we saw, what we're looking forward to. We'll talk about the matchups of the week and analyze and kind of give our opinion on the direction of the of the coaches and their teams and either offer our two or five cents two cents for gamma five cents for myself because we don't have pennies in canada anymore but kind of offer up how we're going to be seeing the direction and almost giving people an update on what their fantasy drafts going to be looking like <laughs> if they actually do end up signing up for it because uh, yeah that's gonna be really good i guess the first thing to talk about is the drafting process now emma you were a part yes of Oxum's drafting process. Yes, I was. Why don't why don't you give me a little bit of a rundown of what that entailed and how you actually approached choosing not only the style that you knew Ox wanted to develop but also what Pokémon you were looking at and how you worked around the cause and effect like drafting you have to do in the Pro Pokéball. All right. Well, when it came to that uh, I actually got into a call with Ox as you were doing the the drafting process. I believe Ox was in the, I think she was in the middle when it came to, to drafting. Basically what had happened is we would go off of what we saw people picking up and we would try to think what in these categories could kind of counteract that. So we took into consideration what everybody else was picking and we tried to meld that with like my and I believe Sharking's knowledge of smogon and the the tears and what can counter what and we kind of just went with that we kept we did i believe we did the the snake format where it was like start out with the first person go to the last person last person picks two instead of one and then so on and so forth which is a really interesting and uh, fun way of drafting i think because not everybody is going to be not everybody's going to have the same options when it comes to drafting so it's a nice little mix. Yeah, and the, and the dynamic nature is what a lot of people will tell you about the Pro Pokeball when it comes down to do you make the decision sitting in second pick versus last pick? Because for those of you who don't know, the, the format is a snake format. So you go from position one to the last position, and then on the second round pick, you'll go from last position back up to first. So you'll have, in that last position, you'll have a double pick, and then on the on the way back around, you'll have another double pick. So, and, the, and you can really see how a lot of, and, and if you talk to former coaches and you ask them, why does the positioning matter? It's because of the, as we mentioned, like the draft, because you're working through a pool that will have bands in it, right? Once you see that there's, like, if you're sixth pick out of 10, for example, your ban is going to be more reactive than someone who has the ability to be first pick where they're like, I hate this Pokemon. I never want to see this ever in my tournaments, right? And it might sound not different enough, but it does impact how you're going to build. And when you look at, I mean, some people have shown me their actual pick order, and they're crossing off things as they go along because they do expect if their first dra- if their first ban, they're also first pick. So at the top of their list, they're hoping that something like Greninja will make it through, Tapu Lele will make it through, Lander Ethereum will make it through because there's a hopeful chance. But that also plays down, 
or it also plays on the on the fact that if you are first banned, well, what do you get rid of? Are you getting rid of something that will stop your number one look? Are you predicting what people are going to hate? Have you scouted what's happened in previous seasons? Because now we have archives from season three on that people can look at to determine how, if there are returning coaches, what was their strategy? What were they looking to do? There's a lot of mind games that comes down to the pick order, and one of the changes that we've done this season is rather than the, the pick and ban order changing every six picks, so basically pool one had one particular pick order and ban order, pool two had one particular pick, uh, pick and ban order, we're now going to be changing it every two picks. So after you get your first two mons all the way around the snake format, it'll be re-randomized. And that will also impact the banning order on the fourth pick, because you ban on the first, before first, and you ban before four, or, yeah, before f- fourth. I'm, I'm mind blipping. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That always throws me off, because I'm like, yeah, you pick up, no, I think you pick up four, oh my god, anyways, you'll see it, no, you pick three, and then you ban the fourth, yeah, yeah, there we go, I was just not saying it correctly, either yeah. way. Yeah, honestly, when it comes to the banning uh, factor, that is a really big screw in the, uh, in the in the toolbox, I believe that's the term. Screw I don't know. What, I don't in the, you mean wrench in the, the works? Yeah, that that's what I mean. That's that's a big wrench that somebody throws in the middle of it. Because especially <laughs> if you have your team figured out in your head, somebody could just ruin that with one band. You know, like there's your one whole team me- could fall apart. You know, there's one mechanic listening to this this podcast going, "Man, there's a screw in my toolbox. I must be doing great." <laughs> <laughs> there's there's many screws screw in my toolbox. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm not the best with uh, terms, okay? I still don't understand that <laughs> calling kettle black thing. The pot call. I, I, I don't understand I don't. that. I, colloquials just woo over my head. No idea. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, sorry to, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I asked you to explain your screw in your toolbox. Um, but yeah, every... T- screw in the tuna. No, that's don't, a terrible don't tuna. Don't ask. I'm not going to ask. I don't even <laughs> want to... Is that like a pizza pizza reference or something? Like, is that something you talk about when you're delivering pizzas? Oh, yeah, I, I talk about uh, there being a screw in my tuna every day to every one of my customers. <laughs> and that's why you don't get tipped. Yeah. Now you know, we figured it right. out, Gamma. We know how to fix it. Social stuff. Yay. <laughs> but the, the implications of every two drafts, because every two picks, the funny thing is, as we mentioned, like having the first and the last uh, pick areas. So let's let's use an example of 10 coaches. One through three. Like pick one through three and pick eight through ten have a ton of control over the over the drafting phase. Not like if you look at eight through ten, like why would you want to be last, Noob? Well, because on the way back around, you have to do your answering subsequent pick. So if you picked OU to begin with, you have to pick a PU next. And if you're sitting there going, Well, I have to pick up something that's weak and I don't want to have to use it very much. Well, you're going to try and pick up the best PU Pokemon that you can. So on the way back, yeah, you might be like, well, I'm getting that OU and I don't really care about my next pick, but it can matter depending on what the pool looks like because the pool isn't guaranteed to look good. There are a limited number of OUs. There are a limited number of of other Pokemon that are in the higher tier. Plus, there's a lot of Pokemon like Gastrodon, who is PU, but has OU potential. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of strategies around being in that controlling kind of that that start the phase off and there's also a lot of control in the well i'm going to round the phase off as well so to keep in the spirit of look at your order and pick accordingly but not leave someone in the middle five fifth pick fifth pick you cry for them you are you are playing xanarkand forever for them because they are (laughs) always answering the people who picked before them and the people who are answering their pick it is an atrocious place to be in and depending on how many coaches we get you know if it's nine coaches number five is literally the worst not even five and six it's number five sucks for the drafting but to kind of offset the pressure that you have and not being able to control we leave it up to luck there there was a time actually in the pre i think in the preseason uh mock tourney someone got first like three out of the six times (laughs) In in two different in in the two different pools, so yeah, it was most certainly funny. But I mean, we're leaving it up to luck because a lot of this again. I mean, Pokemon is luck. We're gonna make the tournament luck too. Why not? Oh yeah. Um, and you throw an element of skill in there. That's 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 how that works. So we're gonna be ch- that's gonna be one of the major changes. A lot of people are gonna have to adjust to. Well, if you're banning first, let's say you get first pick, ban- uh, first draft, first uh, ban. It doesn't mean you're gonna get first ban or uh, last ban on the fourth pick. So. It, it keeps it more dynamic for coaches. It also makes it more interesting for viewers when you start seeing that everybody's like, hey, I have a plan, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm last pick all of a sudden, and they can't keep with that plan because someone might see what they're trying to do with their team 
And it encourages those intellectual or more, I shouldn't say intellectual, those more experienced players who can see through the plan of this is the type of core they're going for. Let's break that up or ban it. Yeah. It can also uh, leverage some trading power in the future because another big change that has happened is actually let's finish the, the, the drafting order first because there is one other change that we should mention. This is the first season gamma where PU and NU are no longer touching. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We now make NU and RU touch. So <laughs> the new tiers that we are drafting from, keeping the – I'm going to be modifying the percentages. That hasn't been officially confirmed yet because I do want to put a little bit more power back into OU potentially because as was brought up by past coaches, a lot of times a lot of OUs will get banned and then you do have, unfortunately, a poor amount of choices and the people who are first pick, first uh, first pool or second pool tend to grab a bit of an advantage, not a huge advantage. We've seen people win with lesser tiered picks. That's what we love about this tournament. But we do want to give some power and not make it so daunting when a new coach comes into the Pro Pokeball and sees, oh, there are 18 OU picks and 12 of them were banned and now this guy gets thunderous T and I have no idea what to do. So to alleviate some of that, we might be moving around some of those numbers, but the big change is now the four tiers that you're picking from are OU, UU, NU and RU amalgamated and PU. So the way that I do this is I search for six RUs first and foremost. All of them that are eligible go into the thing and then we go for six NUs and I keep going until it rounds it out. That tries to give it as close to a 50-50 as possible. It doesn't guarantee there'll be 50% RU and 50% NU. Clearly, as I said, how it's as close as it can be. But it will favor stronger pokes overall in the metagame. So that you don't feel so oppressed picking in that tier when you're going to be seeing some really great mons and then some mons that have just fallen over the years. The other change is the picking has been a little... The RU has no hold over OU anymore, so it has now basically been picking OU, you must pick PU. If you're picking from the NU or RU, you must pick from PU or UU. So you really have to go out of your way to pick OU, which is also why we are considering, or why I'm, I guess me, I'm doing it, why I'm considering <laughs> giving a little more power back to OU, despite the fact it's most likely still going to be heavily targeted. It could also centralize a lot of teams, but Season 5 is a time of change. This is the season where we're going to be going all out. Gamma. Yes. I'm pointing to the wrong camera. Anyways, Gamma. It's okay. Yes. If you had heard that there were enough OUs left over after an entire round of banning, would mm -hmm. this change the way that you as a player, don't think about who you've helped or anything like that, but if you were drafting yeah. knowing the way you'd want to do it, mm -hmm. what kind of things would go for you through your head knowing that there is one eligible OU for everybody within each pool? Well, that's the thing. I'd have to look at the Pokemon in the OU. And honestly, based on that, I might not necessarily go straight for an OU Pokemon. I might see what's in, I don't know, uh, UU or, or RU and see if there's something that can pick counterbalance most of those OU Pokemon that are left there. Because I'm sure people are going to pick it just because OU is OU. Yeah. Everybody's going to pick OU mm -hmm. if they have the option. So... Based on that, I'd kind of balance out like the pros and cons of specific Pokemon in those different tiers before I went and jumped on an OU Pokemon because more picking power, basically, I would have if I went for the lower stuff. Yeah, and the nice thing is most times now, because again, a lot of Pokemon have been shifted around, certain Pokemon get a little more value in a mixed OU format where you're not just allowed to pick OU and PU because if you get away with that, I don't know what the other coaches are doing. That's like ridiculous if they're making it and on top of that even if those six OU synergize like you're not going to pick up Toxapex like if you okay first of all you get away with Toxapex Tangrowth you're disgusting I don't know what you did to mind game and Jedi mind trick everybody but Gross. if you're getting yeah if you're getting away okay let's let's just let's just pull the elephant out of the room here if you mm. give somebody Mew Heatran again I quit doing pro pokeballs. <laughs> Do not give any of those combinations again, please. I'm, I'm begging you. Oh, because no. Celatran was a core that Sweet D used in Season 3, I believe. And that is a real core that you could do now because Celebi is UU and Heatran is OU. So, over a series of things, that can happen. And you could also get messed over by, um, by the actual draft order changing every two picks. So, if that happens again, beware that you will have to build a team... 
that will work against that or at least build its own powerhouse and play around it properly. Yeah, the nice thing is, I do agree, it, it, it would depend on the pokes. And that's what I that's what I think is the appropriate response when you talk about, let's give more power back to the upper tiers. Because yeah. now, if there is more, it doesn't mean it's going to be the best. Like, you can get Porygon Z, and Porygon Z is good, right? But mm-hmm. it needs a certain mm-hmm. setup. It's not a it's not a Landorus theory, and it's not a, you know, like, think about it. It's not a Mega Gallade. Like, if you're looking through all these Megas... Because remember that Pokemon get placed in the tier in the Pro Pokemon based on their highest ranked either Mega or Alternate form. So for example, Sovali will actually be put in NURU because Sovali Steel is NU, whereas every other Sovali is PU. Unless that's changed recently. But So basically you'll have access to all the Sovalis in the NU format. But then you look at Swampert. Swampert is, I believe, a UU poke, but it's Mega's OU. So is it worth it picking up a Swampert as your water core? It's good, don't get me wrong. But is it worth it for your draft when you've got a bunch of other water types, you got another great core that can run like Milotic, and it's still doing the same thing you want? Is it worth it picking up that OU? But is it also worth it to leave it up, or are you going to use it to leverage trades or to just deny from other people? That's what I love about this tournament. There are many things. Yes, most of them don't play out, but we like potentials potential anything can happen and that's why we're trying to play around with the picking order and give people a little more control over that it should be interesting we didn't want are to i didn't want are to be that much of a pivot anymore i think are to ou was a little too much of a pivot especially now that i'm going to be putting two tiers together and pokemon haven't moved around yes you could argue that half the are you tier has been gutted so going from are you to ou be okay but at the same time i want ou to be that you're all in and you're going to settle for something that is not ranked very high Keep in mind, make a Charizard Y can go into Shiftry. Just saying, that's that's the way it can work. So, there are potentials for that happening. Uh, okay, so we have... The battles are pretty much staying the same. It's still a series of two. That's going to be staying consistent. Trades have been changed up. So, one thing I should say about the battles. There are no more subs. The coach is in independently. There will be no more fill-ins. There will be no more subs list, or sorry, free agents list as we called it. No more dedicated subs. The system after one season didn't really look very good. It wasn't guaranteed. The The commitment wasn't there as much as the coaches were trying to give. And sometimes stuff just happens and you just have to kind of say, okay, we're going to let it go. Lose, that's okay. We obviously accept that in the Pro Pokeball. It's a fun tournament. Yes, there might be a bit of a, like I said, a monetary reward in some way shape or form at the end but it's nothing to give up your life over so it's uh it's we'd rather just let the show go on than try and bring someone in who has to pick up a team right away and they might not even know they need to get bring up the team and they're not invested as much as everybody else so there will be no substitutions there will be no free agents if you're not in the pro pokeball be a fantastic viewer because you are always a fantastic viewer yes and, and there's always much to do especially when it comes to rooting for your favorite team or doing your fantasy drafts. There's going to be that. Everyone's going to be in their rocking chairs, just leaning back, beer in hand, <laughs> holding it. Hurry up. It's like a racehorse, except with the pro Pokeball. <laughs> I got to go to bed by 10. Hurry up. <laughs> Kill his slow king. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> they won't oh no. die. <laughs> Why did they give this thing regenerator? <laughs> No, the better question is why for generator and ability to begin with. Anyways, uh, oh but there'll be lots to do if you're not involved in the pro Pokeball. And obviously you're going to have shows like this, which will hopefully keep it hype. And yeah, hopefully you scored three points today on show me your movesets. Anyways, mm-hmm. with the trades, trades have been um, revamped a little bit. Gamma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you like to play with a lot of different Pokemon? I do. And actually looking at this trades thing, I saw something new that I hadn't seen before. There's no Gibbsies Baxies this time, is there? There are no Gibbsies Baxies. You picked up on it, my friend. Mm. So, one of the big changes that we have, which I, I guess we should talk about that first change, because that's what brought up the no Gibbsies Baxies. Gotcha. There are infinite trades now per week. No, sorry, infinite amount of trades you could do in a, in a season, one per week. What you had to do before is take a week off when you would trade to not just completely control the trading market. It worked at the time. Now I want more chaos. So, I'm pulling an Oxum, and I'm adding, <laughs> basically, you can make one trade request per week, either with the pool that is with the leftover Pokemon, or with the coaches. Now, obviously, for those of you who don't know how the trading works, this, this podcast is going to be just catering towards the changes, so you can go take a look at the rules that are left down below, and you can go from there. 
the reason why I want to do this is I also felt if people want to play around, because this is this is a good change for the upper tier. Maybe they find that one thing that'll help them win, but most likely not for the people who are in the top. They're they're at the top for a reason because of their draft. For people who may not be the best or the most experienced players or not looking to win the tournament and just here for fun. I wanted to give them kind of an opportunity to experiment with a lot of Pokemon, maybe learn a lot along the way. So even if you're not smashing opponents, maybe if you're not 6 0 or doing anything like that, I wanted to give an opportunity to learn through battles how these lower tier mons work, how these upper tiers might work. The same thing still applies. There has to be a Pokemon of equal or lower. So you might, tra like, trading up an OU, you're never really going to do, but if you're not playing around with that, you just want to experiment with certain Pokemon that might do the same thing but are a different type or whatnot, I wanted to give that flexibility. And that's also increasing the number of Pokemon in the overall pool will give more trading potential. So I'm not going to play around with any upper, like, trading up yet. I still want to keep it to this this tournament with the trading equal or down still. But I don't see any harm in giving people control over changing their team up every week. Because I'm stupid, Gamma. There is a giant change to battles this season. Oh, yeah? Weekly, and what would that be? The weekly bans? <laughs> you know, the, the kind of oh. shell, the, the bombshell that I dropped on all the coaches who were like, Why? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that, but to conclude on the on the trading thing, that's gonna matter a lot when your same Pokemon's getting banned twelve weeks in a row. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. It, it definitely raises the stakes on that. Yeah. So let's let's talk about weekly bans, Gamma. Um, do you wanna? Oh are you are you familiar with what I dropped on this? Uh, please uh, re enlighten me, actually, because Done. my memory is not great. <laughs> yeah, this is this this okay. This this is a very important change because this will shape draft and this will incredibly shape the success of teams that over centralize on one strat week by week before your week's battles you will have six days i think i set it at i think there'll be six days before your battle so basically a day after your last battle you will have to ban a pokemon on your opponent's team that you don't want to see for that week so if i'm going up against gamma i hate mega venusaur real real story i hate mega venusaur so if he has a venusaur on his team i'm gonna ban that well, I guess I'll just have to go Life Orb Venusaur then. I'll take that. Oh, wait, that. never mind. Uh, oh, yes! Never mind, it's banned! <laughs> never mind, it's banned! <laughs> oh, no, now my whole team's falling apart. I should have thought of this in the drafting process. And I'm going to prepare for Venusaur because I forgot that Mega Venusaur and Venusaur are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going to a wedding with your plus one, but neither of you show up. <laughs> oh... That's sad and stupid on my part. Anyways, yes. So, if there's a Pokemon that I can't stand, because whether he brings Life Orb Venusaur or Mega Venusaur, I ban it. There are no restrictions to the ban. You could ban the same Pokemon week by week. Everyone, every coach could ban the same Pokemon on the opponent's team week by week. And it's to give control over what is the crack in the armor for the opponent. Now, this is not a shout-out to what last... or what Season 1 looked like, because if you were trying to ban out Season 1's team... Dagger was still going to crush you 12 But I think this will add a lot more strategy. Uh, there was a lot of discussion around this type of addition. And to explain it from my perspective on why I made this change, I talked it over with the people. Actually, Amagama was there when I was talking about it. And going on to that strategy thing, I didn't want strategy to end at the trades and at the draft. I wanted to bring something that would show off more Pokemon on a team, hopefully, right? If something gets banned and we see something consistently being played as a team of six, then... As a more experienced player, you might be able to identify, well, you know what? That's what they're going to play because this is gone. But I'm curious if I ban this now on my time when I'm playing them. And you watch patterns, right? It's more to show about the patterns of the players as well as showing overall, is your team really centralized around one win condition or one core, right? Do you have to actually now resort to this weaker core? Do I know that I can sweep you if I ban that one piece of defensive stall piece of crap that I hate and I can win because of it, right? So... I think it's going to be super exciting from a from an analyst standpoint because we're always going to be wrong about why things are getting banned and we're just going to look there and go because it's stupid. That's 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 the answer you're you're planning to give to. I know. So <laughs> I think it's I think it's going to be really exciting for for play or for viewers because now they won't see the same six come out or if they do, they're going to see the same six out and it's going to have a story as to why you see the same six. There is drafting mind games where you could debate people simply by grabbing a poke that you know people are going to hate. So you leave up Greninja. Somebody picks up Greninja. Everyone bans Greninja. If you built around Greninja, you're stupid, 
right? If you're still trying to build around Greninja, hoping week by week you're not going to get banned, you know the bans in advance before you have to hand in your teams, so it's not the worst. You're not just going to build, show up on the day and go, yeah, your Greninja's banned, now your entire team is destroyed. You'll know well in advance. But this will solidify an extra layer of strategy that I want to see if people could develop a metagame over. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. That's it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Out of curiosity, just because of your experience with Oxum's team, yes, her team actually is a is a great example. Or even I like I like the same the top three teams. We're look at the top three teams or top four teams, right? The mm-hmm. top two that really stood out to me, which were the most developed in season four and were successful through play, was Mitchy W's and Ox's and, and Shark. Well, Ox's team, oh yeah, followed up by Sharking as coach. With her team. Like, with Mitchie's team, we saw that he had the Vegas Sharpedo strategy, also to make a B drill. Each one were good against certain coaches. Do you think that you that her team and his team would have looked slightly different if, one, we had taken out something like the Mega Houndoom or her more successful... I'm trying to remember, like, her Thunderous T, I think, was incredibly useful on that yes, team. Yes, it was. Yeah, so she was building around that, along with, I think, Metagross was on there a lot, Mega Houndoom was on there a lot... And then oh, yeah. Mitchie was using the Mew, the Heatran, the Slow King, Mega Sharpedo, like these these very common things. Do you think that in terms of Oxes, there would have been a, a change in the dynamic on how she developed her aggressive teams week by week if she had found out that the particular threat that could sweep through people's teams was actually banned out? Oh yeah, no, honestly, saying that though, the Mega Mega Houndoom was a big piece of her team. If somebody had taken that out. First off, she would have thrown a fit because obviously she loves dogs and stuff. But she would have thrown a fit as well because her whole team, that was a big cornerstone keeping her team as strong as it was. And honestly, I could say the same thing about Mitchie. If you threw out the 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 Slow King, that was a big piece of bulk in his team. It did a lot of work. <laughs> it saved him in a couple matches, yeah. if I remember right. Yeah. Yeah. So this whole process could definitely change stuff around with the bands and I feel that people are going to have to do their best to work around them and keep their team with some sort of win condition that they know they can do. Even if one of them's taken out. Yeah. I think, I think the argument would be stronger on Ox's side. Mitchie's team felt very overly inflated. It was very everything. solid. I do agree yeah. that taking out slow King would probably have given maybe some people who could play it out better, more control. Over maybe that whole, you know, hey, Slow King just keeps healing and keeps phasing you and keeps future sighting you and stuff like that. But the other person that I think about is Ivan's team, where he relied heavily on that Tangrowth, Mantine, Rhydon core. And yes, the thing is, people broke through it. Like, here's the other here's the other side of it, right? You could find it through players who are really good, and you take out a piece, but they're probably, maybe their draft is already really good, so you're just going to make them play something different, but it shows that they could be flexible. Then you look at the, not the, I don't want to call Ivan a lower tier player, because he wasn't lower tier, but he, like, for someone who wasn't in the top two, and you take out Mantine, or you take out Tangrowth, and all of a sudden his defensive core looks like crap on a platter, right? Like, it just looks so much weaker, because he's used to playing a three defensive core. Now he's got to try and find a way to pull maybe another defensive book from the trade pools or in the draft. He needs to think about if I rely on a triple defensive core, like I do in my, and even sweet D does, right? We rely on triple defense cores. So that's why him and I actually play very similarly. We, we don't like setup sweepers. We play very consistently, which is more of a momentum kind of chip away standard. Don't take over the game, but don't lose control either. Right. Just stay middle yeah. of the pack. So for someone like Ivan, who likes to play that way too, and maybe, or maybe almost a little over focuses on defense at times. If you start chipping away at that stuff, or maybe somebody like because they weren't like they're not doing very well in the tournament, and all of a sudden you see like, oh wow, I can I can Goomba stomp off this guy simply by taking out that one mega that keeps killing everybody, or maybe he's taking pokes off. If I take that down, it will really expose the weakness of that. So it could get even worse for lower tier coaches, but I don't want that to be a scary prospect. I want that to be something of an empowering prospect where it makes you really consider sticking to your comfort levels. There's nothing wrong with experimentation. Trust me, this Pro Pokeball is not, like you're not getting sponsored by anybody, especially Taco Bell, because that's our job first. But <laughs> it might just bring more and more thought to people and actually make them think about, can I play a seven, if I really want to play with six mons, can I play with seven knowing that this one might get banned out? Do I have subs that will make more appearance? Will usage change and wins as a result of usage also change? Those are very interesting <laughs> statistics to me. Honestly, this is the place, the pro Pokeball is the place to experiment and have fun with Pokemon, from what I've seen at least. 
I I love seeing all these Pokemon come out of the wor- woodwork and just demolish in certain situations. Dude, shout outs to season three being one with a Bronzong. That li- mm-hmm. literally, if I don't know if you remember with uh, Arizona Articunos, week. I think one or two. Uh, did he trade? In, either way, he traded in week two or three for that Bronzong onto his team, and was then mm-hmm. a champion. He made one change, and that was even without weekly bans. Made one change through a trade, sniped it out because he saw it in the pool. He's like, nobody picked it up. I'm gonna take it because it's uh, it's better than my Amoongus or whatever he ended mm-hmm. up using with it. I can't quite recall, but yeah, it's like people can play around with it, and now there's even more tools to play around with the tournament. It's it's. Gamma, I'm so glad, one, you were excited just to do this in general, but two, that you're actually just being this super overly inflated ego hype man. It's so good. I do my best. You do, you're doing your best, man. I'm, I'm liking it quite a bit. Yes, quite. Mm. I try. Um, <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing wonderful, my friend. I, I can't wait to get to the actual event. It's going to be great. I know. It's going to be great seeing what people can do. There's a lot of talented people that are very... They think everything through, and I'd love to see how they all melt together and see where everybody ends up. And there's also a lot of memers in my community that just like to use yeah, really that's weird it. movesets, which, you know, is a nice break. It's, it's I don't want to call it court jester level, but it does give a nice break in a tournament when you're trying to commentate a lot, and you're just looking at these things like, oh my god, there's so many things to analyze, and then all of a sudden somebody just brings out something really, like, ridiculous. You're going, oh, thank god. <laughs> See, it doesn't have to be all serious. You can have fun at the bottom. I mean, yeah, exactly. there's, there have been actually, I arguably there have been some really fun battles more at the bottom than in playoffs. I'm dead serious. Yeah, th- there's literally no restrictions on how silly you can be. Exactly. It's, it, it really opens things up as a side note. I'm loving doing this podcasting thing. This is awesome. I, I like it. It's fun. And I, I'm, I'm enjoying my time. I, if I didn't have to leave like mm. when I do, I got, you, you know, I got I, you. I'd be here longer just chilling. Well, in that case, let's get into the last two things that we need to talk about that are changes. Because like I said, Season 5 is a huge change time. So, yeah. playoffs. Playoffs look a little different this time. Everything is still organized similarly in terms of the top six still go there. You'll be bringing your team of 12. Everything will change. There are a couple of changes that you need to know about. Seas- seed 3 through 6 will now be randomized but Will now be randomized into their pairings in the knockout round. I keep hitting the mic, dang it. It's okay, you can cut that out. You're right, I'm going to cut that part out too. I want to just repeat that. See, <laughs> I don't know where we were. <laughs> now I can't cut this out because everything's broken. Seeds, seeds. You were at seeds. I was at seeds. Yeah, you were. You were. You were growing your garden, talking about seeds. Oh, thank God. Okay. Seed three through six will be randomized into their pa- matchups in the knockout round. The reason I'm doing this is it is to help other people not sandbag. I don't want people coming up with their own matchups. In fact, I'm putting that over to Seed 1, who has earned first seed and will choose the side that they will play from the winners in the knockout round. So basically, Seed 1 will choose which side they want to watch, whether, like, let's just use the old example, Seed 3 versus Seed 6, Seed 4 versus Seed 5. Seed 1 chooses whether or not they want to play the winner of Seed 3 through or 6 or Seed 3 or 4 or 5 before the knockout round is done. To compensate for the fact that we not only will we have bans before the knockout, semis, and finals, right? We will have also an extra team building time frame. So, the people in the knockout round, to make sure they make it through in the best of 5, they will have that one time where they can't change between all 5 battles if it goes up to 5 battles. Before they go into the semifinals, they're allowed to bring one more draft. They're allowed to change up any movesets that they want and submit one more thing that will carry them through the semis and the finals. At the same time, the seed one and two coaches do not have to submit their teams until the semifinals and they see the winners of the knockouts. So making it much more flexible. Uh, Many people have been very great at not changing their movesets and not trying to cheat. I very do much appreciate that. And we will continue to stay with that good behavior because the last thing we're going to be talking about will be something that will kick you out of my channel forever. But I think that it, it opens up a little bit more because some people were not reading the rules correctly and thinking that, yeah, you have to bring one team through knockouts into semis into finals when people would just ban out the same thing. No, no, but you do have to build around two best of fives potentially with people knowing what your team is relying on which is the ultimate show of who's got the most flexible team because that ban lasts all five i can't remember if i let me check really quickly if i had decided on no it's just before the battles they don't what i was actually going to do this would have been really interesting is make a ban halfway through so like they ban on Mm. they ban on after game or before game one 
they play out two and then before game three. But I'm like, you know what? That could three oh too hard. So rather than doing that, just doing it at the beginning, and they have to play through the series of or the best of five with that. So yeah. you're welcome. <laughs> and it's a very, 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 very flexible playoffs now. I, there are still trades that can be allowed. I think I have trades disabled before playoffs begin, but obviously you can still trade with coaches as they've been kicked out and things like that. But because there's no restrictions, everyone has that opportunity. You don't have to think about, oh God, the week before I can't trade because now before playoffs I can't trade because of the one week break you had to take. So now there will be a lot of change-ups depending on if you're seeing you're making it to top six. Here, yeah, let me go grab this to prepare for top six. Otherwise, if you're in the bottom not top six, the bottom not top six, um... You can start giving your coaches away and be like, yes, you're my favorite Lord Scrubbington. Here, have my Pokemon. You know, that sort of thing. So, I don't know. I think it's going to make it. I think it's a good way to trust. Again, everything is testing here. And uh, it will really play into that whole banning system that we're trying to get going. So, oh, man. It's tiring. I need need you to speak more, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just. (laughs) Actually. I'm bad at explaining rules. But you can explain this part because you've already been the hype man for this tournament. Would you like Alrighty to go over then. the ethics section that we have developed a little bit more than what we had in the past four seasons? All right. I believe I'm going to read it off right now. <laughs> Her- wouldn't ask for anything else, man. The core reason for this draft tournament is to have fun and give a nod and a giant thank you to the Pokemon community who's made the majority of this stream's early success possible. Cheers. If you were going to have issues making it to the drafting battling days, let Noob know via PM on Twitch or DM on Discord and he will take care of it. Failure to stay consistent, present, and timely will result in consequences for yourself and the other coaches. If tournaments run into multiple issues with that persistently cause issues with content, the draft will be cancelled until he can either make the times more convenient or until there's enough devoted people to allow for a smoother experience. So, just to cut in about that, we, we already have determined, like, I'm a, after you'll know about after this podcast episode whether or not we have the tournament going on but uh, we do look for a minimum number I do like 8 I can settle with 7 as well just because I don't like it sucks to be that one person that doesn't make it into the top 6 but having 6 people in a tournament when the top 6 goes to playoffs it's kind of boring so I ask for at least more than 6 before we yeah. start anything off we look like we should be okay this season to get at least 9 it at the current moment good. or so but this tournament has been designed to be something that is literally a show. It is not about being the best. It is about running a show and being a part of a show that makes this community and also encourages those positive behavioral uh, expectations that we have as a part of our rules. We will have two strikes, and these will be heavily enforced by my moderators, and my gamma, I think, being one of the moderators. Uh, <laughs> n- think you are a moderator. Yeah, you are a moderator in the channel. I am. When? Aren't you? No. You're not a moderator? I'm not a mod. Did I just backpedal? Damn, I did. Wow. You're no, you're a numerator. You're good. I, I'm in Discord. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Okay. Fine. Okay. You are you are a numerator, Sorry. nonetheless. It's fine. Yes. But uh, I'm a numerator. Hello. Uh, <laughs> hello. Hi. Hello. But we will be heavily enforcing the ethics and. It's not, and just to make something very clear, because this was a talk in season four, and just to bring it out into the light again, there were some issues with some things being said and some um, not so flattering comments being made about certain co- uh, about certain coaches, both in the winning yes. and the losing section. We are not saying that trash talk is necessarily bad, but there is a way to do it because this is a big thing that does come up a lot in my community. And if you are listening and part of the community, you know, and, and you can think all you want on this. Just know that I have given instructions to my moderators to regulate it as it would be my normal content. We are a completely inclusive community. We do not hate on anybody's identity, hate on any reasons for you to be who you are, nor do we hate on any skill in the Pokemon realm. We will make jokes, but we jest, and that's all we do. If there's any time that you are feeling uncomfortable, and there are reasons for coaches to come to me and tell me that they are feeling uncomfortable and you think it is unjust that you are being given warnings or being kicked out of the tournament. I don't give a crap because I care about how people are feeling and not about how you think they should feel. So I will be taking people's... I will be taking feedback from moderators and everything else a lot more seriously 
in this particular tournament because we are going to be making it a professional environment. And as such, this is the reason why we have the sign-ins for the participation. So you have to sign in before you go into the battles. You, If you are late, you will get a strike. There is still that participation rule of 25% lost or 25% not showing up. You are gone, and we will not hesitate to shut down the Pro Pokeball at any time. It sounds strict, but as we mentioned before, going back to that person in the very beginning who said, how do you run a tournament online? This is the way you have to run it. You have to you have to drop people along the way. You have to say, look, I really want you in it. But at the same time, if you're going to be a jackass or if you're just unfortunately... Sometimes people run into things that, ha that affect their lives. We don't hate you for it. The community will not hate you for it. Things happen. The tournament moves on. If it doesn't move on, we come back and do it again. I, there's no qualms with that. I think I, 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 I really do pride myself on running a consistent tournament, running an inclusive tournament, and running a tournament that brings everybody together. I don't care if you play competitive Pokemon, you're a shiny hunter, Nuzlocker, whatever you do with your Pokemon games, you can feed them to your dog, I don't care. As long as we have a community event where everybody's getting hyped, getting excited, and wanting to watch a show that will exceed any expectations that you might have of a show that happens on twitch.tv slash propokenoob, you're gonna like it. I couldn't finish it because I forgot what I said in the beginning of that sentence. I hate when I get that hyped. But <laughs> you're going to like it, and we're going to make sure that it's the best show for you. So that's why the ethics exists. The ethics section will be developed over time as ish hopefully issues don't arise, but as we develop design more issues and theorize more issues that could come up in the tournament. But I think a lot of the rules have started to weed out a lot of the other play-based issues, and there also has been an ethics and behavioral sheet handed out to all of the different coaches so they know the etiquette of what to do before battles, during battles, if there's an issue during battles, all the different commands that they have in the showdown section that can block out certain issues, as well as, you know, naming Pokemon and stuff like that. So we have this all instigated, and we will not hesitate to enforce it. TLDR, don't be a jerk. Yeah, Gamma can confirm of all things. If you if you're not if you are a constant viewer of mine, Gamma and you can confirm that I do not take any crap, right? Because oh, yeah. I am a very patient person. I am a very understanding person. I will listen to people's sides, but there is a line where you just become stupid. <laughs> to be to be yeah. very blunt, to be that you become very out of line and you know my expectations. So if you know my expectations, I will treat you human to human, but if you start pulling things that are just not kosher, you know that I am going to turn and protect my community before you because that's just the way that it works, and there's no reason that you can't get any remedies, but we do take bans in the Pro Pokeball, and we do take bans from the channel very, very seriously. So I just wanted to make that very clear in this podcast. I know it sounded a bit preachy, but at the same time, if you are planning to join the future, understand, yes, I am very strict, but I think, if anything, that should encourage you to, to join the Pro Pokeball because you will be protected and your values and your experience will be celebrated and will be re revered if you do become a Pro Pokeball champion. Anything to add to that, Gamma? No, I think you I think you explained it clearly, and I'm sure people will understand. And I hope to see a lot more people come in and enjoy themselves and not have to worry about certain people being certain ways. Certain catch people. My drifts. I, I catch all drifts. In fact, I catch yeah. so many drifts, that's why I have so much breeze behind me. My, my cape naturally <laughs> flows as I am Captain Noob. Yes. There you go. There you go. Mr. Canada himself. Mi oh, God, I'm not Captain Canuck. No way. <laughs> I got I to gotta be able to walk before I can be Captain Canuck, just saying. Or oh, learn true. how to fly. <laughs> well, can there fly? you go. I don't actually know powers of Captain Canuck. Mm. beaver tails that's all it was beats me <laughs> ladies and gentlemen yeah. season 5 july 2019 start date will come up soon you will hear about from us about the pools you'll hear about us from all the news that you want to keep up with in the pro pokeball amagama thank you very much for not only being a co-host of the pro poke podcast for the pro pokeball section of everything which is i i still don't know how this is going to work but we're going to be doing it thank you very much for being a co-host for being the hype man and for bringing your opinions and an extra voice not just to spare mine, but to promote yours. Is there a place that people can find your stuff if they want to check you out exclusively? Okay, I guess real quick. Uh, I do a lot of the editing for Team po uh, Team Pocket Aces. Uh, we have our podcast going on. We have our channel in which we're doing content uh, soon. More content will be coming out. Uh, there's also twitch.tv slash amagamma if you guys catch me ever streaming. I guess the same thing on Twitter. You can check my tweets or whatever. And that's that's about it. Everything's the same. Amagamma. A-M-A-G-A-M-M-A. 
And if you're looking to find the action here on the channel, twitch.tv slash propokanoob, there will also be social media updates on Discord. Look up propokanoob or Twitter at propokanoob. Maybe Instagram. We'll see how much time I can actually post stuff. But uh, there, this year, we're going all in, man. We're going to have those updates. You watch the NFL. You watch the NHL. Now you're going to be watching the PPB. We're going to have – we actually already have the tag on Twitter started for hashtag propokable. So if you like anything and you want to show this tournament off – Hashtag ProBokable, share the links, be that shameless person that I love about you, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you very much for joining us. Have an excellent day, everybody. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.